Welcome to Friday Night, Night Lights. Lights. Um, you know the drill. You know the shit. You know the drill. You know um, the drill. This, this is how we do. This is how we do it. Um, this episode, we're talking about hardware, the trophies, f- the physical things in life. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Um, we're talking title belts. A uh, bit of a weird thing to talk about for half an hour. Uh, Important though. You know, we might struggle, but we're going to make it I work. I don't think we'll struggle. We're going to make it work. Um, Have a list. What, we t- what, what What's the crack then with belts? We're just talking about the significance of belts. Like, obviously, from an outside perspective, like you've with other sports, you've generally got weight class belts, yep. but wrestling kind of moves further from that. So you've got things like television championships, intercontinental championships. Like, what's the kind of difference between those different styles of titles and you know how is success measured in wrestling basically cool. and also they look cool as well they, they look, look great mean, good it's not better than holding a title belt it feels good it I does, used to have it, one when I was a kid it feels like you've made it one. I've got one from um, a man what's his name oh God, I can't remember now a man in Pakistan uh, somewhere in Pakistan <laughs> a man made me the um, the big big the big eagle belt um, it took about five months to get to me. Um, <laughs> never thought you'd see his money. You were sweating. You know, you it, was were sweating. Those, it was one of those things where he asked me for, I think, about 100 quid. And he was like, you've got to send it me this specific way, otherwise I can't do it for you. And I was like an idiot. I was like, <laughs> okay. Did you, West, did you have to do it by Western Union? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. It might have been something, something, like, wire transfer. something like that. So I sent him 100 pounds and he's like, and he kept messaging me. He's like, it'll be perfect. It'll be amazing. Choose your belt, choose your leather, choose the, the, the thickness of your fucking gold. And I was like, okay, cool. This, this and this. And he's like, amazing. Send me 100 pounds, please. And I was like, but it's good though. It, cool. it, it's massive. It's, it's really so good. Good. Yeah. So I mean, you say, it did take it five months to get here with me numerous times messaging him being like, where is my Belt. Having, and, he, um, and he was like, "It's being, it's being produced. It's on the production line as we speak. It's, it's looking good." And he kept sending like stock photos of the ones that he built before. And I was like, "That's not my belt, is it?" Though? And he's like, "No, it is. It is a Sean belt. It's coming <laughs> along. It's coming along." But luckily, I did actually get it. And I say I've got a big eel belt now, um, an off-market one. And it's yeah, when you have it and you like, you, you hold it. Over that shoulder. Over the shoulder. It just it as it makes um, you feel good. Like, as someone who's not uh, the actual ones that ever. Well, I've I own I own one. So I owned one of the replica ones. So like I've we've held the the actual ones from the progress. The progress shows, we? ones heavy. We've held, we've held that yeah. before, haven't we? With, I don't um, know if mine's heavier um, than normal because I asked for like a thicker thing because I thought it was like um, a piece of shit. If I yours is thicker. way heavier. It's really than is. WWE shop ones. Really? Like when I bought mine, um, the the first thing you notice is that the the leather is super stiff. Like, it's not worn in. Right. You see that with the UFC belts. Like, my favourite memories of wrestling belts is when Austin used to drag it out and it was, like, yeah. flapping yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It was, like, like proper hide around. leather and it looked soft. And when I got mine, it was, like, really, like, stiff and it didn't bend very well. But um, it was definitely lighter than the one you've got. Speaking to be honest, I'd say... Ooh. I'm not going to smash it off my head, though. beer for the working man. Swig a beer for the working man. And lady. We're all in here. We're all in here. But yeah, um, the one the one I bought skinned as alive and worked for my mum all summer to get it. And then yeah. I had I had the money with I think it was probably about three hundred and fifty quids, and I was like grafted for it. Yeah. And they were like, "Are you sure you want to spend that <laughs> on, a piece on, of a, milk. on something that a would guarantee metal. your virginity?" Would <laughs> <for them>. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally wear it, wear it on the like, like, like a chastity belt, the world's <laughs> most expensive chastity belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I did. I wanted it, and I bought it. And that was the, um, the EWF point Heavyweight of your Championship for the was. longest time. Yeah, but I sold that thing. Sold Which it. one was it? What it belt? was the big gold, you know, the big penny oh, belt, the Ric Flair one. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous belt. Styling it? and profiling. All the rubies belt. fell out of it because we used to use it as a weapon. Brilliant. Like hitting each other in the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was the one that we used like for our podcast logo. All of the colours from that belt. Yeah, behind inside, the skirt a little inside bit. Inside yeah. scoop, we used yeah. we get like a colour board from that belt because it's just such a gorgeous piece of fucking like. It was so it's nice. Physical. It's like a thing. It's like a hard thing. Yeah. Like it's the, a big. The staring at the lights colour palette. Colour palette. The big gold. It's the big gold belt. What have, we become? Yeah. what have we become? I know. No, it's a, that was before we even started recording as well. That was. was. That's when I went off on some kind of big brand identity thing. And you did. We need to do this. You're an intense <laughs> man. It felt like a, it felt you like don't like do a, anything. I, took a bit, I sapped all the fun out of the podcast before we even started. Just a little bit uh, in true Rob fashion. No, it's it's, it's a no. It's a gorgeous thing to have, and it's a go- and I get why. I'm going to buy another one. Do it. You can get um, proper 
There's like the replica WWE ones are like three hundred dollars, yeah. yeah. but now there's like a super replica, a super replica. Yeah, it's that's a thousand dollars or yeah. something. Did I tell you I tried to hang man on the wall and it and it fell off. It was <laughs> I too, it was too heavy. Wall. <laughs> I like I put it up on my own because I didn't want to tell my dad that I bought one. <laughs> I didn't want to tell him that I bought one. I thought it might disown me, so I got like these like shitty little nails and I like I slapped it in and I was in bed and I just had the biggest <laughs> crash and it brought down like. Chunks of the wall, <laughs> just like on the floor. Off the and I was like, "Is that oh, why you were plastering?" It when no, you put no, that picture up. Totally different reason. Um, but now there's, there's, there's something brilliant about it. And I, I, like Rob, uh, Tom just said, there's there's ways you can carry a belt, and it and it gives it so much more. I have um, um, a picture of me, which I'm going to put up on the uh, the Instagram of when I went to NXT at Download, and they had a booth set up where you could hold the belt, and it was like, good. "Oh, the best picture wins a prize." And I thought, "I'm I'm going to be cool," and it's like me with it. Draped over my shoulder like the biggest, sweatiest mark. <laughs> you Roman Reigns style. I did it before Roman, and I got over a, the like slung over yeah. your back. Slung over shoulder, back. Right, I did it yeah. before Roman, so I'm gonna keep hold of that. I'll timestamp it. I want to put it up on there so you That's can brilliant. all uh, bask in my glory. Bask in your glory. Now there's um there's there's a there's a lot of different things that you can use a belt to do. Um, hold your pants up is one. <laughs> You can kind of, you can, yeah, you can, you can. So a lot of people, a lot of wrestlers, wear it as like a kind of yeah. not as a fashion statement, but to say like I am the best at this current division or this current thing. Mm. Uh, but then, like you look back at Austin, and he said numerous times. Um, again, I, I referenced it the other week. Um, he does like a, he does like um, a voiceover of one of his matches, um, mm. and he and he's like dragging it out. You know, like, like you say, he wouldn't wear it. He'd just. He'd just literally hold it by the very, very end of it and just drag it along the floor as he came out, like just walk out with it. And he always said, like, when he's a heel, he doesn't care that he's won the belt. He just cares that he's the best. And like the belt is just um just an attribute that comes with being the best. Yeah, yeah. And he just like he just drags it along the floor and like throws it into the ring. And it's like it's just a disrespect to the company, but just such a brilliant heel move as oh, well yeah. at the same time. A modern example of that's like Tetsuya Naito in mm. New Japan, where he got the Intercontinental Championship and actually went out of his way to smash the crap out of it like yeah. he was taking hammers to it he was throwing it against ring steps and he he broke it really badly yeah. like one of the most gorgeous belts in wrestling he ruined yeah. um and that like you say like it took the austin thing to the next level where like especially in japan where they prized the belt very, very like, yeah, at very one point there was like a um a press conference where it was sat on like a table like a plinth and he just threw it on the floor and put his cap there with his logo Perfect. on it and just Perfect. sat down mm. so good yeah. i suppose so what one thing to to point out is that Obviously, lots of wrestling promotions all have their own belts, but mm -hmm. there's some there's some belts that are like for they represent different things within the company. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose New Japan and WWE are very similar in the way that their intercontinental belts are the ones that are the the sort of the best worker of the company or the best yeah. sort of performer of the company is not who's not necessarily the the top star is the one that's normally holding that normally, belt. Yeah. So we Seth Rollins at the minute in WWE and you've seen you know like Miz was always one of them mm -hmm. as well. They were the, they're the guys who were the hard workers who put in everything that they can, yeah. as opposed to the the main titles like the WWE title and now this you know the Universal one and the same with the IWGP one in Japan. Yeah, that are just the this represents that you're our top star and you're representing our brand mm -hmm. as this superstar that you yeah, know yeah. that's gonna be the face of the company basically. Mm -hmm. And lots of companies have you know tag belts and they all represent the same, you know a similar same thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. but there's no real belts apart from those two that mm. kind of define who someone is almost in the sense Definitely. of their, how they work and what the, where yeah. their stance is in the company at it's that similar time. similar to like a TV title or a US title which are just kind of like different companies equivalent of mm. an intercontinental. I mean you can there's, there's something that I kind of thought about a while ago that if you wanted to go back and take like a, a stamp of a great match from any era or from, from like a Wrestlemania from one to the end if you just look at the Intercontinental title scene, you're almost guaranteed to get one of the matches of a night. Because yeah. you had guys like Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, um, more modernised, you've got like Sean, Brett. Like, well, the, the Shawn Michaels, the Razor title. Ramon ladder match oh, was for the Intercontinental phenomenal. title. And it was one of the, probably one of the best matches that's... Yeah. It's a stand-up match for WWE even now, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it's... Um... It's a special thing, isn't it? So like, and you, and you always see them crying when they win the belts. And yeah. obviously they know they're going to win it, but Definitely. it still Definitely. represents that that company has give, has got so much trust in you and believes in you, or, you or this piece of gold thinks you're it. worth so much totally. that they're going to say, you're right, you're the person now that's carrying our company forward yeah, absolutely. in Mick whatever Foley, division you're in. Mick Foley said it's like winning an Oscar. Yeah. It's like not, not necessarily like 
you know, it's not like the Super Bowl where it's mm. like whoever wins wins. It's more like you win that Oscar because we value of your performance. Your performance. Your yeah, your yeah, work, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It's like yeah. a good seal of approval. It is. It's there. brilliant. And there's a, there's a lot of um, yeah, there's a lot of times you'll see him you know, winning it for the very, very first time. Mm. Like the, the, the classic picture of Shawn Michaels on his knees holding the, um, the, the intercontinental, intercontinental Yeah, title. yeah, the boyhood dream. Um, yeah, That's and he's like, and he's, and he's like on his knees with it uh, draped across his arms, looking at it, and he's just like sobbing. Frankless. And it's like, it's just, yeah, that just that embodies what it means to hold a belt in, in wrestling. Yeah. Um, is there, there's a lot of um, superstitions around belts, isn't there, um, in wrestling? Well, there used to be at least. Like a lot of people weren't, if they're not, t- if they never won the belt, they won't touch it. Um, really, a, a, cu- a couple of guys. I don't know who said it before. I can't remember who I was listening to, but a lot of people, or some some wrestlers, if they don't, if they never never ha- had that belt and they wanted to win it in the future, yeah, they won't touch it because they think it's like bad luck because they, they, won't, like, they won't get yeah, it. Nowadays, you'll see a lot of bad guys standing over a good guy with the belt Holding it up. in the air, and like. But I think I, that, that might be that might be where I've heard heard it. Like somebody, some people beat don't some, do that. Yeah, somebody beat somebody down that was currently holding that title. And I think the, the either the promotion wanted them to like grab it and pick it up and I thought the closing shot of them holding it above the head as the, as the show went got like dead, mm. and they really didn't want to do it because they thought it was like kind of bad luck to touch that belt before they'd actually won it before. Interesting. It was really really weird, but it's like, like that, that just shows you like kind of how much people, how many, how much wrestlers mm. like kind of value that belt like they don't want to go near it yet because they don't actually haven't earned it yet. If that kind of mm. makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is really really interesting to me. Yeah, I mean there's. Um when you, when you look at wrestling belts as well, there's definitely like a pecking order of prestige as to what a belt totally. means. And I think that, um, from my perspective, probably the most prestigious belt in the world is the IWGP heavyweight title. Absolutely. Mm. That's not only the best worker in the world, but it's been the same belt for for a long period of time, like a very long period of time, whereas WWE kind of adjusts the look of their belt for toy sales God, a lot yeah, of the it's time. Always happening. And um, the current I think we're one, on like the sixth or seventh different yeah, version of the WWE one, aren't we, in yeah. the minute? And I suppose that's why the Intercontinental title is quite important, because that's the only belt on the current roster that's the same as it was back yeah. in the day. I suppose it's changed the colour of the strap a few yeah. times, but... I mean, it's it's changed before. I know mm-hmm. mid two thousands it was a slightly different shape, but I like it's only one been well, sort of one of two designs. shapes. It's not been yeah. like the older ones from the sort of eighties that were more like boxing belts almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think um, another another belt that carries a lot of prestige as well, even though it's not actively defended a lot, is probably the NWA domed globe that Ric Flair used to hold. Mm. And that Cody Rhodes recently won and re lost to Nick Aldis. Yeah. But that belt, you look at it, and even though it's not the same belt, and you can tell it's a more modern version, it's mm. quite chunky, it's not worn in yet, you still look at that belt, and it its lineage is insane. Like yeah. almost Even because they used to have like international versions of it, like you'd get like Hay- Hayabusa, and you'd like have yeah. the Japanese version of it, yeah. and that was the belt that was like signified, you were the best, like the, the, the Wrestling the Alliance deemed you the guy to carry this belt through all yeah. the territories and stuff. I, speaking of carrying it, I used to like how Ric Flair carried it under like his a, arm. Like a, yeah, like, like, a, like, a, like a little yeah. briefcase thing. Oh, like a little bag. So cool. Holding, holding, like all his, like, holding all his drugs oh, in his, um, so cool. his women's hotel room key cards. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, like really... you were saying earlier about the different way different wrestlers hold their belts. And, you know, you get the classic um, over the shoulder thing, which mm. to me was always like Triple H and The Rock. Because yep. I know The Rock would walk out to it as well and then he'd fling it over his arm yep. when he was on the buckle. But wearing it over the shoulder kind of became the go to thing you see a lot of guys do. But it is refreshing when you see a guy will actually strap it around their waist and wear it like a proper belt. Yeah, um, Dolph Ziggler used to do that. He used to sort of carry it around, wear it yeah, yeah. properly. Um, yeah, yeah. And CM Punk used to do it as lot as well. Yeah, Punk looked great with that. I mean, a, a lot of people that spin a belt, I mean, it is John Cena and it is Edge, but like when I see it, I, I don't think it ever looked better than when Punk was holding it. Yeah, I don't, was, like, for I, I don't like that belt just for aesthetically how it yeah. looks. I think it's just a bit, it's very dated. It's gaudy, isn't it? It's very dated to what it looks, you know to a certain time whereas you want a belt to look timeless, timeless. like yeah. the new um, mm. NXT North American Championship is like Beautiful. a boxing Gorgeous belt, belt. it Gorgeous looks absolutely belt. amazing and it looks like it could have been something mm. from the 50s or the 60s yeah. you know it's like a did belts come in re- boxing before or wrestling before I think but well boxing because you had a lot of the, like the WBO belts and the kind of, course, of like, like a, 50s, a sash 60s, with like little yeah. small plates yeah. on them yeah. So um, they were they were around before it's that. Like wrestling took it like and turned that dial to like fifteen, didn't they? With like yeah. how they looked and stuff. Yeah, but yeah absolutely. There's, there's there's a lot of prestige behind them. Um, I, th- I think like hasn't New Japan only had like something like since nineteen eighty five, 
20 hold 20 different holders or something, something like that. There's not been a lot of them. Like when you think about it in like 95, I think, um, 15, 30 We mentioned this not long back as well about how New Japan, how they, when they announce someone, it's, um, I think they're on 44 now with Kenny Omega and it'll yeah. say it's like 44 for IWD champion Kenny Omega and I like how they reference the, the, the amount mm. of people that have had it before yeah. whereas WWE don't really do that they yeah. just sort of say you know longest reigning in, yeah. in, in some sense but like it, say, it, it means so much in Japan mm. like if yeah, in, in 35 years if only for, like 44 different times that belt has been held by mm. somebody to me is just crazy like, there's so much type Bruno how long did Bruno hold the title for was it oh it was about it was nearly 10 years I think so it was yeah, just a wrestler, consistent a wrestler run. called Bruno San Martino um, in the old days of WWF that yeah held the belt for around 10 years when you think about that in today's terms like if you imagined Roman Reigns for example holding the WWE championship for 10 years or 20 like, you wouldn't even watch it you wouldn't even watch it you wouldn't happen it wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen. It could never no. happen anymore but like back in them days it meant so much it meant that you were the greatest exporter yeah. they could currently offer you but like i mean how long did Akara hold the belt before he lost it oh, to omega 3 years 3 years i think three years, yeah, yeah, even years, that yeah. like even 3 years that, of the title that is now like crazy yeah. crazy yeah. that you you would see that um, so be hold it for that long like we, we every, see, almost every match was spectacular as well. Yeah, and Very there's a lot good. of title defenses there as well. There's a lot. Oh, it's not like you know we Brock, Brock Lesnar at the minute. But, you know he had it for 400 odd days or mm. whatever it was, and he defended it nine times or something. So whereas like CM Punk held it for the, a couple of days shorter than that, but defended, defended it 19 it. times. Yeah. And yep, yeah, it's um, it's it's a, it's a it's an interesting kind of um, way to show that somebody is the best. It's it's weird because. Did you see um, what Progress used to do with the staff? Yeah, they, they, well, they couldn't have followed a belt, I don't think, so yeah. they just had like a staff of... A weird bit of raw iron caught out like an eagle on a staff. Yeah. It looked very like SS, which was a bit weird. A little bit. <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> Horrible. A little bit, little bit Nazi. Yeah. But, um, you know, these well, things they've got happen. some gorgeous titles now. I mean, Brilliant. their titles are Their, really their nice. men's Progress title is amazing. It's really nice. It's a really nice, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, I mean, again, they had the um, the shields. Do you remember the shields? The shields, the tag So they team, had like yeah. a big shield that they cut in half and like, yin-yang. and you could like, yeah, like a yin and yang thing, and you put them together and it would make one big shield. Oh, well, great. Yeah, because uh, nice. I, I just don't, think, I don't know if they couldn't afford a belt or they just didn't want to spend the money on getting yeah. two belts yeah. made. Um, and it's and it's weird because again, it's technically a title, like you're technically holding the title. Yeah, yeah. But it's just not the normal big piece of gold like you always see. And I quite liked it. A lot of people didn't like it. I know Trent and Tyler used to bring them out and just throw them on the floor because they were just like pieces of, I think they were like foam or like pieces of like just cut wood yeah. or metal or something like that. And it's like, yeah, even though it wasn't technically something you could wear around your waist, it still signified that they were the best tag team that there currently yeah. was. Um, and as I say, it's a very weird thing to. To just that is how you recognise that somebody is the best currently at that like time. The title um, yeah, it's 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 tricky as well because like to get res- a, a title or a belt respected, it can't be something that's done very quickly. Possibly. Like no. if you look at the the Universal title, as soon as they unveiled that, because it's bright red, yeah, everyone You're just like, it. what is that? Mm, that is the the, the the Greatest Royal Rumble belt, the, the, the green one. The I quite like that belt. It looked great, but. We saw it once, well, and then that was it. On the same, yeah. on yeah. the same. Note. It can't have that same thing. I know the WWE one yeah. that AJ Styles currently has is a different incarnation of ones from the past, but it still looks more like a real belt. Like a real belt. Yeah. Yeah. And they put, they put like the different names on them. So obviously you got the, the normal. Plates, yeah. It's called the they say the different names and like kind of personal personalize themselves to the belts. But I mean in terms of the actual names of the belts. Um, so you've always had the WWF going into WWE Championship like it is just the WWE. The, introducing the WWE champion. It's like mm. the heavyweight out of Obviously, it. Obviously, well, the world's that? heavyweight champion used to back it up a bit with the big gold. And then Rey Mysterio won it. And it really makes sense, sense. yeah. You're not um, but then, like, uh, so you're like, you're, you are the WWE champion. So you are, yeah. of WWE, you are the champion. And because that was on, that got drafted to SmackDown, I think they just, so they never like SmackDown being the better show than, show than Raw is. Even though it's technically um, like. Technically the better, like, wrestling style. Like, te- technically, since, like, yeah. in the ring mm. it's better. But, so I think they kind of panicked and were like, "Shit, what we're we gonna do?" So they brought out a belt called the Universal Title, as if to say, as if to say, you are the best in the universe, like the WWE universe, yeah. like you are the best in the universe. Uh, which was like kind of, I think it was like a ploy for them to be like, "Don't worry about the WWE title, like that's good, but this is the Universal Title, like, this is the best title ever." And it was a big red thing, and it's just not really you getting. Look at the way. Just bring that WCW one back. Oh, that. No. That was, yeah. They used to. They used to have like yeah. a WWE one and a and the old WCW one. Um, I think the last great. WWE 
title they had was the one Brock and Eddie feuded over the Undisputed the one because it belt looks just like yeah. a classic belt yeah. it was the, a really Jericho nice belt. was the first winner of that one wasn't it yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And like you had Kurt Angle with it and it was like long and it had all the like little extra it looked strap. great it looked, it looked it really looked good fantastic yeah and I, that's it. I mean for me I say that's the reason why I own the Big Eel belt is because for me that's the best looking belt that's there ever the has belt, been yeah. um, and that is the belt when I think wrestling titles I think of the like. Big Eagle um, just because The Rock and mm. Austin and Triple H were the guys that held that yeah. and it and it personified them as the best ones ever it's definitely up I like the Winged Eagle as well Winged so Eagle is a Brett, good Brett yeah, would Brett hold, would hold and, that a lot. and you know Hogan yeah. had it for a bit and Michaels had it for a bit and, and sometimes I mean wrestlers make the titles but sometimes titles don't make the wrestlers um, agreed yeah definitely you get you get a lot of guys that kind of win by flukes or roll ups or mm -hmm. dusty finishes and you kind of like you shouldn't be the champion it's and weird it to think really how sense. long of the last few years Jinder Mahal was the world heavyweight a long champion, time. WWE champion a very long time was it over a year he was definitely over close a year. to a year or was close it close to, to a year? year it was close to oh, a year right. but I think they yeah. then I, I didn't mind him as a champion I thought he was a good he sort of well. heel champion he held I thought he was really mind good it, but when but you I look think at they Jinder didn't, now yeah they almost kind of I mean listen when you are a modern day Maharaja, you're going to have Maharaja. to hold you're going to have to hold that belt for a whole week yeah, yeah, yeah. you I can't I think they kind of maybe showed what they really think of him by him losing it on a raw show mm. in England. Mm. First time ever. Bit yeah. weird. Yeah. Bit weird. I mean, no, we, I mean, we really expected it. Were they trying I mean, to like say that we don't like Indians or something like that? Was that what they were going for? The big, the Yanks were like, uh, oh, maybe the Yanks. I've not said that. No. <laughs> no. Listen, I've not said that either. That's I'm not, not saying, what I'm saying. WWE is racist. But, but no. Um, the, no. Uh, I think what the, the thing was, it's probably like, they knew they were leading into a big year yeah. fueling UK wrestling. Of course. Yeah. They thought, yeah. let's, they're talking about Wembley a lot. They're getting a bit rowdy. Let's give them a title change and then they might be okay Something. with that. And it, it gives It was them good. A, like, you didn't expect it. It was, it. It was cool. Coming, yeah. yeah, it was really cool. Um, but I just think the way they've dropped him so far down into the mid card, it just it just shows what you'd, I look at him now, and sometimes I forget he was ever WWE champion. It's political as well. So like they, they, is, they yeah. give they they gave Jinder the belt to build the Indian market, and it's yeah, well, nobody's you've, denying you've that. Can't deny like, that. Yeah. They they literally gave him the belt because apparently it didn't work. So they always wanted Roman Reigns anyway. So this so. is the things like it's weird because and again mm. you'd listen to. I didn't listen to, but you can change your commentary language if you're watching it in different countries mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And he was a massive heel, so everybody hated him in English wrestling, like in American face, wrestling. Yeah. But on the Indian commentary, they would always put him over as the good guy, yeah, going yeah. in against the people. Brilliant. And it's perfect. Yeah, like, when his boys are jumping in, yeah, jumping in, in. So yeah, team, jumping like, in and oh, helping him out. Smart move by yeah. the Maharaja. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, it's um, so good. It's really good. What is Tom your yeah. favorite? What if if you could have one belt? If you could hold one belt, what would it be? From a look standpoint, I really like the old WWF tag team titles. Okay. Like with the flat, the flat bottom on it, and then it comes yeah, up. They yeah. just look like a proper belt. Okay. Um, but I'd probably say I'd probably say my favorite belt is that NWA Dome Globe. Mm -hmm. You see it with Ric Flair. I just I look at that belt and I think that is that is the mark of a champion, and it's got all the the world on it, like on the little side yes, plates. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just to me when he's like, you hold this, you're the man. Like that belt, whoever's holding it is the man. And I know it's Nick Aldis at the minute and it's quite low, but I just think the way it looks, it deserves so much more mm. than what it currently is. Mm. And it'll always, to me, like I'll look at that and I'll think that's that's the world heavyweight title. What about you, Rob? Probably the um, the WCW Big Penny one. Because yeah. it's just... It's awesome. It's mad, isn't it? It's massive. It's overly... Yeah. Um, decorated mm. it's you know really intricate in its design I do like the UK WWE title I think that mm. looks really good the way they've integrated like the coat of arms in there I think that looks really good but um, I think it's just from a time of uh, sort of like Jericho having the title when he when it was in WC in WWE when WCW had sort of folded and there'd been all brought in a whole invasion thing and they used to use that title as the one of the main titles on WWE I just mm. thought it looked really good it looked more legitimate than the other ones yeah it really really did like actually looks like a belt instead of a a toy yeah, yeah that's what it's that's that's things, yeah. and again they, they, they do a lot of them a lot of like especially WWE market like make them to sell mm. like because they do sell the kids ones like the yeah. little mini ones you can buy the cheap ones um i tell you what i do actually is um go on the iwgp us title mm. i love that i belt. think it looks good really belt. good Gorgeous. and everybody who's won that belt 
has gone on to win the IWGP heavyweight title as well. Everyone. Really? Apart from Cody. Apart from Cody. But he's still holding it. Interesting. But after they lose it. I didn't realise that. Yeah, when I think Juice think of it. it oh, wait, no, no. No, no yeah. Juice Juice oh, wait, that's completely it. wrong. Where did I get that fact <laughs> from? No, no. Juice hasn't won it and Jay White hasn't won it. Why are you trying shit? No, but Jay White's probably no. one of the next on there for the IWGP heavyweight, I would have thought. What was the I fact think? about it? Do you even like wrestling? No. <laughs> I don't know where. I'd, I'd heard some fact about it, but I guess that wasn't Jericho it. won it as well. He's not won that. He didn't win that one. No. What are you on about? He won the no Jericho won the Intercontinental. He won the title. Intercontinental, yeah. yeah what are you on about? He didn't win the US one. Didn't he? No, Jericho was the Intercontinental. Brilliant, still is. right? He still cool. is. Jericho still is the Intercontinental champion. Sound. Let's um. What we're gonna Who do? Who beat Kenny Omega? Jay White. Jay White. Jay White got beat by Juice Robinson, and Juice Robinson got beat by Cody. I know wrestling. Okay. I know. But none of them have held the. I know the fact no. that I said was completely wrong. Only Kenny's gone on to do it. I don't know where I got that fact from. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there is a fact in there somewhere. What we're going to do, guys, is end the podcast. <laughs> only 20% of the people who have held that title have won we, the Good fact. Do you know what? I probably read that fact when it was only Kenny Omega. <laughs> <laughs> At that time. When At he was the moment, first yeah. person to have that title. At that moment, he was the only one that had done it. At some point, Because he was, was the right. only person to ever won that. Yeah. At, some point, <laughs> At some point in I time, was right. you were correct <laughs> in what you were saying. Yeah, we should probably go and look into um, look into this. Watch some wrestling. Watch some wrestling. Instead of just talking about Instead it. Instead of just chatting basis. utter bob eye for like. We've not watched wrestling in two mm. weeks and we've done three podcasts. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> these things happen. Um, What's your favourite one? The the big eel. Yeah. That's why I bought yeah. it. I was like, I was I was looking into other ones and I do like the big gold. Like, yeah, cause it just, it's nice. It's just, it's just a meaty belt. It's such a big belt. Um, big boy belt. Big boy belt. But no, the, the, big, the big eagle is just... I don't know. When I think when I think wrestling, and I think of the glory days of wrestling, like the attitude, the attitude era, era, yeah. I think of the Big Eagle. Um, just the way that it kind of you know, because it, it's such a it has the, the glow is such like, a beautiful yeah, like. I used to like it with the blue backing on it. The blue, they, they had that. For, they only had it for like. They didn't have it very long because Austin months. swapped it out for the smoking. So it had the uh, old WF logo. And then it went to the, the attitude era, like the scratch so WF cool. logo. Yeah. Um, so, so but for cool. a time when it had the blue the blue strap, that was good. They used to but, use so the Big Eagle as the hardcore champion. Yeah. Belt. There's yeah. rumour that it was the one that Mr. Perfect smashed up with a hammer. Really? Yeah, because he smashed one up with a hammer, but then WWE have said it's not. But then when you look at it after he smashed it up, you're like, it he really, really, like really it. could be. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, to be fair. The hardcore belt's a weird belt. Thanks for listening to this episode of uh, Friday Night Lights. Um, it's been a pleasure. In the meantime, you can catch us um, at the Lights Pod on Twitter, uh, staring, staring at the Lights on Twitter. Um, we've wrote a few pieces for rgm.press, rate good magazine, uh, read those. Um, we'll see you soon. Don't know when, don't know where, but we'll be there. Down the road. Down the road. Down the road. Down the road.